Good evening, folks. This is Red We Met coming to you for with another bedtime story. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. This time I want to still talk about Jimmy Katura. Uh, Jimmy uh, and Kurt and I went to Jimmy, that was his guy, and we started putting in uh, slot machines in East Chicago, Indiana and uh, East Chicago Heights, all around the steel mills, but uh, also it was in Chicago Heights too. It was all, seemed to be Al Palato's territory. I, I would go over to Valley on, uh, off of Belmont and pick them up, and we'd go around the trailer and drop them off at taverns. Any place where they had bookmaking or something going on, they just took them, and we were rolling in tons of quarters. I mean, it was really coming good, but, uh, <laughs> Al Palato's brother was uh, chief of police at the time, and he said uh, we had to get out. So basically, we were only doing it for like two and a half weeks or something like that. And we were talking about going into the porn business, uh, pornography. And uh, Jimmy said, uh, I can't help you with that. Uh, I remember this distinctly. He said, uh, go see Joey. Uh, he's a good boy. He'll take care of you. And so we went to American Bonding, and uh, that was the first time I got to meet uh, different people, like uh, Irv Weiner, uh, uh, a lot of different people, but uh, Tony Spalaccio, uh, Joey Lombardo, uh, Joey Casentino, uh, just a regular crew that was in there. But anyway, uh, from that point on, uh, uh, Joey, there was a restaurant next to it called Mr. Pat's. Joey uh, uh, sat with Kurt and myself, but he didn't speak to me. He spoke to Kurt, and it was kind of thing like uh, I was there, but I didn't hear it. You know, I, I mean, I was. Kurt would have to translate it to me. He wouldn't talk to me directly at that time. And uh, we got it going, and he said. Uh, he gave us the okay, and then I went out and started looking for a store, and it ran pretty good. Uh, we got it started. Uh, it was putting it together was a real joke. Um, I wrote about it in my book. But at any rate, uh, after that, uh, uh, Marshall Cafano came into the picture, and he was actually my partner, so to speak. Uh, Kurt was my partner also. Uh, but Kurt wanted to cheat. He wanted, he wanted to cheat Marshall out of money. And he was trying to shoot me and kill me all the time. So I went to Cavano with the Red Fox Inn on North Avenue. And I threw my keys and said, here, take the place. I thought you, people, you, men were, you guys are men of honor. And I said, I'm tired of getting shot at this and that. And Marshall was all upset. He kept bringing me back for, you know, say, have a drink with me. I said, I don't want to drink with you, period. And, uh, he actually went down to the store and took it away from Kurt. I, he, Kurt got a phone call. Uh, uh, we made a phone call together and met him at uh, the Red Fox, not uh, Stagecoach Inn, on the corner of North Avenue and uh, Wall Street. And Marshall went and met him, and I went in with a couple of Marshall's bruisers, and we took over the store. And uh, Marshall came back in, and we made our first count in uh, the back room, which was peep shows. And it came out to uh, $1,000. And he said, okay, 50, and I'm not gonna count with his $500, so you owe me $500 a week. And so he said, I don't care if you make a penny, uh, $10, $20, a million dollars. He said, just make sure I get my 500 a week. And I didn't realize it at that time, but he was splitting that up with Johnny Rogers, Alvin Johnson Rogers. So eventually what I did was I bought Roger. Rogers came to me and said, do you want to buy me out? I want out of Chicago. And uh, I bought him out. I bought him out of the store. So then I was only two fifty a week. And instead of giving it to Cafano or, or, or Johnny Rogers because he was out of town, I gave it to Phil Amato, uh, Jimmy Kozlo's father-in-law. And uh, we did a lot of things together after that, a lot of things. It was uh, it was my end, so to speak. 
to get more noticed by different people. I never asked people questions. Uh, I just kind of went along with the program, whatever it was. Um, Kurt never bothered me again, except for that time when Marshall saw him. Uh, he said that, uh, he called me on the phone while Marshall was there. And I asked, I had to ask Marshall, I said, what happened? And he said, uh, don't ask me that question again. And then Kurt called on the phone and he was standing right there. And I told him, I said, Kurt, and everybody could hear this, Rogers could hear it, Johnny Rogers and uh, Marshall Cofano could hear it. And uh, Marshall's listening real careful. And I said, Kurt, I said, look, I was, I promised this guy, and that's how we refer to this guy, that guy, whatever. I said, I promise this guy, if you ever contact me again or anything, that, you know, I would have to tell him. And so he said, you're trying to get me killed. And uh, he said, what are you trying to do? He called me Billy. He said, what are you trying to do, Billy? Get me killed? And I said, well, he's standing right here right now. Do you want to talk to him? Kurt hung up, and I never heard from him after that. I just never heard from him, period. So that's another one of my bedtime stories. Good evening, God bless, and you can find my book at redwemet.com or you can buy it at Amazon, but it's an autograph edition if you buy it at redwemet.com.